Lindsay, thanks very much for sitting down with me today in the beautiful California sun. Mm -hmm. uh, first, can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Yes, my name is Lindsay Wyatt. I am a squash and pumpkin breeder at Johnny Selected Seeds. We are a small seed company based in uh, Albion, Maine. And I've been there for about two years and uh, came there after finishing my PhD at Cornell in plant breeding and genetics. Okay, excellent. And, and what drew you to Johnny's? I was really excited to come work at Johnny's for several reasons. Uh, the first one was I got to work on pumpkins and squash, which is what I worked on in my PhD. And there are not very many squash breeders around, uh, and especially open positions, so that was really exciting. Uh, but another thing that's really great about Johnny's is our core customers are uh, advanced home gardeners and mixed market growers. So people who are doing direct marketing or eating the produce themselves. And that lends itself to a lot of opportunity for breeding for quality and for diversity and uniqueness that's really fun. Excellent, which fits perfectly into what you know, the path that you were headed on. Mm -hmm. Nicely done, yeah. nicely done. So, so you've been out in the industry for two years now. What, what things have you learned that you might want to share with recent or soon to be recent grads? I've learned a lot of things. I think, you know, one thing that I learned is I was more prepared than I thought I was after grad school. It can seem like a scary next step, uh, leaving kind of the cocoon of graduate school and going out into the world, but it was a pretty good transition. And um, I think some other things that I learned were I wish I had done even more to develop some business and management skills. I think that's something that no plant breeding programs really address that I'm aware of, but something that I think every plant breeder really needs to know. There's been a lot of talk about communication, and, and we even talked about just before our interview here that uh, I don't think plant breeders think that they're going to spend a lot of time in, uh, on the communication side of it, but you do. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts on that? How, how would you suggest that these students prepare to go down that path? I think the biggest thing that you can do is practice. Um, I think teaching, I was a TA for two semesters, really gave me a lot of good practice with that. And you know, you have to do a lot of presentations in grad school whether you like it or not. And it gets much easier over time. So you know, I went from kind of freezing and panicking and you know, those early presentations to I, I'm told a lot I'm a natural now. And nice. that was not an automatic thing. Nice. So everyone should just persist and uh, it yeah. does become easier and continue to practice right mm -hmm. whether you want to or not well now I think it's fun yeah. you know I I chose to go into industry but I really was sad that I wasn't going to get to be a teacher too but I'm finding a lot of small opportunities for teaching even in my career now which is really great awesome you mentioned that everything went pretty smoothly in your transition was there any surprises that popped up yeah I mean it didn't go perfectly don't don't get me wrong but you know well um, I think my biggest surprise was I had only ever pictured myself kind of out in the field doing plant breeding but at our company it's much more complex than that and I am more interact or more exposed to you know sales and marketing and operations and seed production than I had really paused to think about but that's been really fun because it's been a really good way to learn and to uh, get to get different perspectives that help influence what I'm doing with my breeding work. Right. So in private enterprise now, as a squash and pumpkin breeder, what things drive your breeding decision making? Well, the biggest thing that's always running through my head is how to make our customers more successful. So we say that a lot at, John at Johnny's, but that's because we really mean it. You know, that's how we're going to be successful as a company too. So I think about things like, is someone going to be excited to grow this in their garden? Is someone going to be able to sell this on their farmer's market stand? Is this going to make our grower customers more money ultimately? Right. Right. Um, and that's kind of a fun thing to think about because there's a lot of different aspects that go into that. Uh, you know, does it grow well? Is it disease resistant? Does it taste good? That's something I really enjoy breeding for is flavor. And I think a lot of other companies, I wouldn't be able to do that as much. Is that kind of the number one characteristic that right now? Is that at the top of your list, flavor? Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think quality in general, so flavor, appearance, texture. I mean, we, we won't sacrifice yield and disease resistance to get that, but we also aren't going to release something that is a high yielder but tastes terrible. If we look at plant breeding from that holistic 10,000 foot level, what would you say are the kind of top two issues that are the most dominant right now? Well, there are two that are really dominant in my mind, I guess. There's a lot of big issues and you can't tackle all of them at once. 
Um, but the two that I really think about are how to make our food system more sustainable and also how to, uh, from our position as plant breeders, make people want to eat more fruits and vegetables and really be healthier. Right. And, and what's your role in that? So I am uh, actually have a pretty active role in both of those. I've had uh, a great opportunity on the sustainability side of things to be involved with an organization called the Student Organic Seed Symposium. Okay. And so that's a group that brings together graduate students interested in organic plant breeding uh, from across the country and some people from around the world to help them feel less isolated like you can at your individual universities. Right. And uh, that's in its, uh, I believe, seventh year this year, sixth or seventh year. And we are starting to also work to form a new professional society uh, to complement ones like the NAPB uh, to call the Society of Organic Seed Professionals to, uh, again, provide that professional community and network. Nice. Uh, we also run uh, a mostly organic research farm at Johnny, so everything that I do is uh, plant breeding for organic conditions. Okay. Um, and then on the, the end of things about you know, encouraging people to eat more fruits and vegetables, I have been thrilled to be a part of the growing culinary breeding movement. So that was kind of started in large part by Lane Selman, who has the Culinary Breeding Network out in Portland, Oregon, if you're familiar with that. Mm -hmm. uh, but just recently at Johnny's, I was able to help co-found uh, our newly named Northeast Seed to Table Initiative. So we're working with uh, our local food hub and local growers and chefs to uh, expose the community to the diversity of vegetables that are available and think about, you know, making the selections that we make ones that are people are really going to want to cook and eat at home. So you're telling me, Lindsay, that plant breeding isn't just go into the lab in the field and figure it out, like that we actually have to communicate our successes, talk about what people are looking for and what they need. Wow. <laughs> awesome. You know what? That, that's a great message. And that's what I take away from our chat here, Lindsay, is that uh, is that that's a critical part to your job, and I think to most plant breeders for the future is, is going to be a key role. Is there anything that we haven't talked about so far that, that you think is important to, to get said? Well, I would just echo what you just said, and you know, I think communicating about plant breeding is hugely important. You know, I made it to age 22 without ever hearing the term or knowing what it was, and coming from an agricultural background. And so, you know, I've really tried to make it my mission to, to do my little piece of that communication wherever I can because I think the more people know about where their food comes from, uh, the more successful that we'll all be in improving that system. Agreed. Well said. Thank you very much for having a chat. I appreciate it. Thank you.